All right, here's my audience. Okay, I've been traveling back and forth to Waco to see my family several times a year. I know the, ro the route by heart, but all the hills and fields kind of blur together until I see the giant white arms of the turbines in Goldthwaite peeking over the trees, and I know I'm only about an hour and a half away from home. Today, I'll be telling you about the positive and negative, as ne negative features of wind farms. I am qualified to speak on this topic as I have done extensive research on it. I will do this by discussing the kind of energy that wind, tur wind turbines can produce, where they can be built, the reliability of wind itself, and the construction necessary to build the turbines. So how much energy do you think you and your family uses? Uh, what about your neighborhood or an entire city? What kind of energy does wind far do wind farms produce? Electricity is measured in watts, which by themselves are very small units. We use the term kilowatts, megawatt, and gigawatt to describe how much electricity a turbine or other machine produces. Electricity production and consumption are most commonly measured in kilowatt hours. A kilowatt hour is the production or consumption of one kilowatt in, in, in one hour. To put that into perspective, one 50 watt light bulb left on for 20 hours consumes 1,000 watts of, of electricity. So that produces one, uh, that consumes one kilowatt hour. Wind turbines can come in different sizes and production capacities. The bigger the turbine, the more, wind, the more energy it can produce. According to the European Wind Energy Association, an, av an average wind onshore wind turbine with a capacity of 2.5 to 3 megawatts can produce more than 6 million kilowatt hours in one year, enough to supply 1,500 av average European homes with electricity. How many homes do you think there are in San Angelo? Well, according to suburban stats, the total, no total number of occupied homes in San Angelo last year was 36,117. That, that means it would only take about 25 wind turbines with a capacity of 2.5 to 3 megawatts to power our San Angelo homes for an entire year. We all remember learning about fossil fuels in grade school. Oil, natural gas, and coal are, powered, are used to power everything from our cars and planes to cruise ships and rockets. Fossil fuels have existed on Earth for billions of years, but that does not mean that they will last forever. BP, the British multinational oil and gas company, released a statistical re review of world energy in 2016 that stated that we have an estimated 115 years left of coal, of coal production and 50 years for gas and oil pr uh, production together. Wind, however, has been blowing around since this giant floating rock in space uh, formed an atmosphere and will continue to do so for as long as the Earth exists. Wind is a renewable resource, unlike those fossil fuels. We now know about the energy wind farms can produce, but where do we build those farms? Wind turbines work best when the air around them is flowing smoothly, unchangingly, and uninterruptedly. An article by Richard Gohan from earlier this year stated that wind turbines should be installed about 500 feet away from nearby obstructions and at a height such that the bottom of the rotor blades will be about 30 feet above the obstructions, including buildings and trees. It seems like existing farms, agricultural farms, would make a perfect spot for these turbines, right? The EWEA states that the turbines themselves take up only about 1% of the total land mass, land area that they spread across. The land around them can still be used for farming, tourism, like hiking, or grazing cattle, or just about anything that it could have been used for before. Because the area around a turbine must be clear of trees and other obstructions, maintenance workers can easily reach them for, ma for maintenance and repairs. Uh, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor, turbines are monitored electronically from a central office 24 hours a day. When a problem is detected, a wind tech travels to the worksite and performs the repairs. Typical maintenance includes inspecting components and lubricating parts. For turbines that operate year-round, routine, routine maintenance may occur one to three times a year. But what if the wind is not blowing? How reliable is the wind anyway? There are many environmental and, and weather studies that go into choosing the perfect spot for a wind turbine farm. Of course, the wind will, will not always be blowing, so developers must measure the wind data of the potential site for about a year. According to researchers, data is taken and adjusted to represent the annual mean wind speed, or AMWS, 
the data is then processed and uh, processed to select only spaces of land that have an AW, AMWS of 6.5 meters per second or greater. The landscape also features factors into finding a potential wind farm site. Technicians must assess the area of the land that they will be building on to make sure the wind turbines catch the, catch the most wind and will not be a danger to anything or, or near them. But what about building turbines offshore? Wind speeds and directions are more consistent out there than onshore. However, offshore turbines endure a lot more wear and tear from the wind and the waves, which increases maintenance and repair costs, as stated by Holly Roberts in an article in 2016. Thus, there are more onshore turbines being built as those last longer and are easier to repair and maintain. Speaking of onshore turbines, I'm sure you've seen those 18-wheelers hauling those enormous white turbine blades around town. They are special, especially noticeable when they turn onto a different road because traffic must stop in almost every direction to let them pass. This is just part of the process and con of the construction that goes into building wind turbines. Just how big are those wind turbine blades? On the National Wind Watch website, I found out that each of the most common blades can range in size from about one, 115 feet to 150 feet long while the towers can range from about 210 feet to 260 feet tall. In an article by Chris Redd on Composite, compositesworld.com, I discovered that the turbine blades can typically weigh from about 11,500 um, 11, pounds to, to 27,000 pounds. That's the average weight of about seven cars. No wonder it takes those uh, trailer haulers to get so long to get around the tight curves. Because the parts and components of a wind turbine are so big and heavy, it is impossible to use the land around the turbine while it is being built. Farmers cannot harvest their crops or drive any equipment too close, and cattle cannot graze near the turbines. Naturally, this slows production and limits the, land of the, use, of the, limits the use of the land that they own, at least for the two to six months it takes to build an entire wind turbine farm. Today, we talked about the energy that wind turbines produce, where they can be built, the environmental conditions required to build the turbines, and the construction processes and effects of building them. I hope that this speech has, has sufficiently informed you about the positive and negative features of wind turbine farms. And I also hope that if you ever make your way to Waco, you see those turbines in, in Goldthwaite and think of what you learned today.